G'day, hey. <coughs> G'day, how you going? So, welcome back to Tuesday's TTT. Jared's TTT. I've got a new addition to the family. It's Spike. Hey, Spike, you say hello. You say hello. Anyway, so welcome back. Well, today we're going to talk about... What are we going to talk about today, Jerry? So that was part two of this week's photography uh, adventures was the zoo. I did part two of the zoo. I had a good comment by one uh, Plato. He said, uh, getting up close with the old uh, bazooka, 100 to 400, uh, it's actually pretty good at the zoo because it takes away that, if you get right up close, it takes away that feeling of the zoo because uh, you, 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 kind of, you don't know you're at the zoo because you're up so close, uh, RBC, that you don't even know you're at the zoo. You could be anywhere really because uh, at the zoo, you've got to really try and eliminate the background. You know, you could try it with obviously low, shallow depth of field and blurry background, but you're still going to get that human element to it. So. Yeah, I didn't look at it. I didn't. Re um, I never looked at it that way. That if you zoom right in, uh, like full onto their face, the animals. If you haven't checked it out, um, I've got links. I, I called it up close with the 100 to 400. I so my thoughts about this is that it's the Goldilocks of all telephoto lenses <laughs> because. It's not a pro, it's not an amateur lens, it's just right in the middle. You get that extra reach, that extra 100 millimeters does help. Uh, obviously, the light factor at f4, uh, that's not f4 all the way, that does sometimes come into effect. But if you're just, if you're just an amateur and you're not too fast, you know, missing the shot, especially in the morning or in the afternoon when the light, the light is very low. It's the, it's the perfect compromise of amateur pro. It's right in the middle there and it gives you the best of both worlds. It's light, uh, it's stabilized. Now I'm not sure if the, I know I was watching the live show with Rob Trek and he was mentioning that <coughs> there's a firmware update but I'm not sure, I think that Robin Wong was saying the firmware update fixed the left and right. I can't, I have to research it, but uh, I, I'll order, and I'll have to hook it up because I don't even know how I might the latest firmware. Because I always thought that the lens and the image stabilization body aren't married together. They work separately. So either way, it's, it's stable enough for me anyway, regardless. Now there's one thing I'm thinking that may have caused the problem of when it broke, because this one, this broke, this is a brand new one. I only had it for like a month or two, and I only used it twice, and it broke, so I had to send it back to Olympus, is the way I'm carrying it. <laughs> I've been carrying it like this in the field, with holding it there, so can you imagine the pressure that's, you know, with this heavy bloody bazooka, on the mount, and then I'm starting to realize people know you idiot, you carry it here, you know, you, you put your strap here, uh, and you carry it with with all the weight bearing on there, not on the not on the camera. So I'm thinking, what the hell? I, I you know, I didn't realize. Now the only thing is, I can't find any strap because I was going to buy the Peak Design ones where you clip them on. Because that, uh, one of the guys on YouTube, the old guy there, he said, yeah, you, you, you attach it here. But I can't find anywhere to hook, uh, to, to thread. I can't find anywhere to thread one of those little round clips, the Peak Design ones. I don't know. So you have to really buy one of those ones where you, you, you screw it in here and, it, and you're, like, you're like a dog clip, you know. Hey Jerry, I should use your uh, harness. <laughs> Actually, that'd be a good idea. Hey Jerry, eh. yes, I'll use your harness, Jerry. No, but 
a few guys, um, Randy was saying, uh, right along with Randy, check out his show. He was saying use a spider, spider harness or something. But that's that's like full on, you know, like a uh, a chest thing, I think, and you and you clip it in like that, you know, and then you carry it around like a baby. I don't know. That might be a bit too much for me. Then I saw one where it's like a holster, and yeah, it's like a gun. <clears throat> yeah, is, is that a is that a bazooka telephoto Olympus in your pocket, or Jerry? Are you just happy to see me? Hello, handsome. Is that a ten-gallon hat, or are you just enjoying the show? So this week, <clears throat> I took out the old trusty six hundred. 60 millimeter uh, macro and I just went to the park and I thought I would try it out as a normal lens you know no macro uh, just that 60 millimeters and I think it's 2.8 Jerry what what is it oh that's strange on the front of the lens it doesn't tell you what it is Normally, it's on the side, 2.8, and as a 60 millimeter goes, it's just 60 millimeters. <laughs> uh, I found that the depth of field was pretty good, the bokeh. Let's get some nice uh, 2.8, you get some nice bokeh going there. Nice blurry background, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Yes, Jerry, nice blurry, blur, blurry background. <laughs> Good girl, Jerry. Nice blurry background. Uh, it's a pretty sharp lens. You just gotta be careful too sometimes when you're using these settings here, you see those things there? I had it on one of the settings by mistake and I'm like going, what the hell man, it's not attaining focus. Why isn't this focusing now? Yeah, the little wheel, you can limit the focusing range, even in video. Because that's like a eliminator, a, 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 you know, it puts it in a range of focus. And then when I went and, uh, to go to full macro one to one there's a one to one button there and you can see and then what I was doing I was going like that now I'm telling you now you know you shake your hands you gotta really you know you gotta breathe and relax and it's full on if you want a hand job so you really need a tripod uh, and it's like but if you're out and about trying to do macro in the field yeah, you really need a steady hand, uh, even with the image stabilization at that close range. And obviously the depth of field is so narrow. I can, I can only imagine putting uh, uh, an adapter on there. I mean, it would be razor thin, you know. It would be that thin, the bloody the depth of field. <laughs> so I don't know, you'd have to, God, you'd have to focus stack, you know, 50 shots just to get one centimeter <laughs> I'll tell you what I thought when I got this lens I thought I, life would be easier which opened up a whole new just macro is not as easy as everyone thinks let's cut to today's gear acquisition syndrome This week's purchase is Luminar Neo. <laughs> uh, I, I said in previous episodes that I wouldn't bother with Luminar Neo. Hey Jerry, because Luminar 4 was good enough, but they had an Easter sale on, and it was only 77 bucks, so 70 something dollars, Australian too, not even US, and uh, I thought, why not? <laughs> and it helps out the Ukrainians because they're a Ukrainian company, apparently. They're probably based in another country. Uh, they had to, maybe they, I think they had to uh, escape 
I don't know, but anyway, they're Ukrainian, so I mean, that's not why I bought it, but I mean, it's a benefit, added benefit. I bought it because my Lumina 4 kept, it just gets, it gets it's a little bit flimsy with the, the software. It keeps crashing, uh, the catalog doesn't update uh, very well, so I started doing a bit of research and Lumina Neo is like Lumina 4 and Lumina AI all together in a brand new package. So I think they built it from the ground up. Uh, it's still in early stages. They only just released it. Uh, there's a few features that are missing, <coughs> but that's fine. <coughs> a lot of those features I don't care about. But the beauty of Lumina Neo is that it's got all the easy shit, you know, like one click go, but it's got the it's got the engine which is basically really the what do you call it the layers you can put layers on top like in Lightroom of Lum of Luminar Four so because apparently Luminar AI doesn't have layers so which is stupid because you want that you know so anyway Luminar Neo that's my uh, acquisition and it's it's the best of Luminar Four and Luminar AI. Now, when I first fired it up, I'm like, Shh, this is shit, it's just too, there's not enough, uh, not enough manual intervention, like, it's just clicks, you know, but I've gotten into it a little bit more, and it is a bit more powerful, full control if you want it, and the AI that Luminar is well known for, which is what they are, they're really well known, the Luminar's Sky, Skylum, I think they're called, they've just made They've made it into magic, you know, almost. <laughs> it's just, I mean, especially that AI uh, slider. It's, phew, I mean, half the time, you go in there, just use the AI, stuff the rest. But if you watch a lot of Jim Nicks, he goes, no, you, 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 if you want to do layers on certain parts, it's good. Like, say, for instance, you've got buildings and you want to make them a bit more details, but you don't want to put the detail in the sky because then that'll just like HDR it full on and it looks shit. Then you just color in just the buildings and you can, uh, you know, make them a little bit more crunchy and leave the sky smooth, stuff like that. So you got full, bit more control. Jerry, happy Easter. <laughs> so yeah, that, this is the Easter weekend. I don't want to talk about it, Jerry. I do not want to talk about it. 108 kilograms from yesterday. I haven't measured myself today. I haven't weighed myself again today because uh, I'm just depressed over it. <laughs> hey, Jerry, huh? what the hell, man? I cannot believe it. I got two weeks full on starving myself you know not starving myself but you know spike it's all your fault and then within the space of two days of pigging out because it's easter uh, all those those hard all that hard work putting weight on is like it's just so easy it's like your body just goes oh yeah you have that a little bit of bread bang it just goes back up Whereas trying to get it off, <laughs> it's just like a, it's so slow. I don't know whether it's the, the body's trying to say, hey, I'm going to conserve food, you know, because you're, you're in, uh, but I, I don't starve myself. I, 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 read, I eat what the bloody thing tells me to eat. And then I got two days of Easter, you know, I mean, I picked out, that's for sure. And the chocolate, Jerry, hmm? <laughs> Hey Jerry, we go for more walks? Hey, what's the matter Jerry? You tired? Jerry went for a big walk this morning. Huh? You went for a big walk this morning? Yes, I know Jerry, you went for a big walk. We gotta go for more walks. This one here, hey, Spike, this one, every five minutes, huh? every five seconds, you gotta stop and do a wee wee and have a little sniff. <laughs> I can't, you can't walk with Spike, huh? You cheeky boy. You, hey, you cheeky boy. 
Yes, you're a cheeky boy. Mm. So anyway, anyway, that's my little uh, Easter weekend um, adventures with Jerry and Spike. <laughs> anyway, thanks for hanging out with another Tippy Tail Tuesday with Jerry and special guest Spike. Hey, Spike. Mm? <laughs> These two are passed out from big walks in the morning. Yes, I know, Spike. You get tired. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll uh, catch you on my next thing I'll do. I don't know. I'll probably end up um, doing some photo stacking, uh, uh, focus stacking with the old classic 60mm macro. Uh, or if that gets boring, I might go for another photo street photography with the EM10 Mark II. That's my classic EM10 Mark II. I don't see many people out there using uh, the EM10 Mark II uh, for street photography, but I, to me, it's the perfect street photography camera, uh, mainly because it looks cool. <laughs> no, but it's got the flippy screen. And Anyway, that's for next uh, next video. Thanks for watching. I'll uh, catch you on the next one. Spider Jerry Spider Jerry Spadon Jerry Spectre Jerry, how am I going to turn the camera off? Spike Jerry, you got to get up